I've been drawing since I was a kid um, and painting and doing art and stuff since I was a kid. Hi, I'm Jordan Stevenson. Um, I grew up here in the Glen and I was a Riley until I got married. Thad Riley is my dad, which makes Becca Riley my cousin. My dad taught me my first lesson when I was probably eight or nine, uh, which was a lesson on perspective, um, which just basically means like where everything is in relation to each other. And after that, I took a couple classes, I took a couple in junior high, and then a couple at a community college. And I wasn't really painting seriously until probably a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, was when I started painting a little bit more seriously and and now I'm selling lots of paintings I just did my first art show a couple weekends ago starting to do wedding paintings things like that I draw my inspiration um, mostly mostly I paint landscapes so I draw a lot of my inspiration from nature and from God's creation and just the beauty that's there I like painting local scenes so um, I have a painting that I've done one of my favorites was of Wilshire Peak which is up there in the background. And so I, I love painting scenes from home um, that make me just remember living up here and the sort of feelings that are here. But then I also like painting uh, lots of moody landscapes, lots of moody colors, muted colors. So right now I'm just painting one of the apple trees. I love apple trees because I grew up in one of the apple orchards up here in the Glen. So I was really excited that we got to do this while the apple trees were still in bloom. And um, it's really fun to do everything in, in this kind of a setting where it's calm and peaceful and the apple trees are blooming. Right now I'm working on this one little apple tree right here. Um, it sort of caught my eye just because it had some of the cool colors in the bark, but then some of the little bright pops of pink I thought were really pretty. Working right now on getting the trunk and branches sort of situated just to sort of get a bit of a foundation going and then later I'll start to add more layers on top. So I'm using oil paints right now and um, one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing with oils is you want to work in a lot of layers. What you're seeing now is not the final layer um, but under here I've got an underpainting or first I have a wash and then just a sketch of an underpainting and then slowly I'm going to add more layers. I've got two different mediums here. I've got my thinner right here and my linseed oil. Um, the thinner I use mostly for the wash and for the sketch and now I'm mostly working with the linseed oil which is a little bit thicker but it also takes a little bit longer to dry. So one of the nice things about oils is that it does take a long time to dry which means I'm able to keep working on it um, for a long time. I'm able to move the paint around so with acrylics you pretty much a lot of times when you put it down on the canvas it just sort of stays there and whereas with oils you have a long time to move it so when you're building in layers sometimes you can blend more or sometimes you can just lay one layer of paint on top of another um, and I think it tends to give it a more cohesive look especially for something like a landscape I like oils because it gives me more time to think about where I want everything and I can move the paint around a little bit if I need to. But this is a landscape and it's specifically plain air. So plain air means that you are painting, you're typically outside and on site. You're not painting in the studio, you're outside. Um, typically I will paint in the studio just because of time. I have two little ones at home and I'm a stay at home mom whenever I'm not painting. Or I guess I'm a stay at home mom even when I am painting. <laughs> um, and so most of my paintings are done in the studio, but it's nice to get a chance to do plein air whenever I can because it gives it a little bit more of an organic feel. Um, landscape, there's a few things that you really want to pay attention to. One of the first ones is value. Value means light and dark. Uh, so if you're getting your, all your lights and your darks right, then most of the piece is gonna feel, is gonna look nice. It's, it's gonna feel right if you're getting your lights and darks right. You can get your colors wrong and your values right and it's going to feel better than if you get your colors right and your values wrong. Another thing is um, atmospheric perspective. So atmospheric perspective is basically remembering that as things get further away from you, they get cooler in color. So you're gonna see more of the atmosphere. You're gonna see less of the object itself in its actual color. 
So if we look at the mountains way out there, they're gonna look a lot cooler than the mountains a lot closer. Even if, if we're up close, the, this individual elements are actually the same color. So remembering that when you're painting landscapes, it's gonna help your landscapes feel a lot more natural and realistic. It's gonna give your piece a lot, a lot of depth. If you can remember those two things, value and atmosphere perspective, it's gonna make a huge difference. When you're painting pretty much anything um, and you're wanting it to look a little bit more realistic, um, don't use black. So never use black paint because um, it makes your painting look flat. Instead, for your darkest value, you can use ultramarine blue, uh, which is a really, really bright blue, and um, or very bright and rich blue. And then you can have uh, either burnt umber or raw umber. Right now, I'm using raw umber for my dark color. Um, you can make a bunch of grays too, and you can make it more warm or more cool. Uh, that just gives it a little bit more depth than if you're using a, a black. Um, so on my palette, I always have um, titanium white, raw or burnt umber, and then usually ultramarine blue. And then my favorite yellow to use is a yellow ochre. Um, it's sort of a nice warm golden yellow as opposed to a really bright or like a canary yellow. So if you're gonna start oil painting, keep it simple. Start with just you know, a simple color palette, maybe five colors or so, don't go past that to start out. Learn how to mix your own colors. And then you're gonna need brushes, um, you know, something to paint on, which could be a canvas. Uh, there's canvas sketch paper or a panel. Right now I'm working on a wood panel instead of a canvas. It's a little bit easier to transport. You're gonna need your mediums, so Again, keep it simple. Just start with some linseed oil. So for linseed oil, you don't need to work in a ventilated area. But if you have a thinner, like turpentine or turpenoid, then you're going to want to work in a ventilated area because it can be a little bit toxic. But don't keep, let that stop you from painting. So just make sure it's ventilated. Palette's always nice. Um, you can, if you're just starting out, you can start out with something like a paper plate if you need to. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not gonna make a huge difference in your the end result of your paintings. Another thing is look up YouTube videos. So there's lots of really great YouTube channels uh, with a lot of really good advice for first time painters. So I know that was really helpful when I was starting out painting a little bit more seriously. Um, YouTube was really helpful for helping me figure out how to do things technically and how to do things in the right way. If I'm working in one setting, like if I were to stay here and do this until it was done, it'd probably take me realistically a couple hours, but it just depends. Sometimes pieces will take me, you know, something this small could take me a couple hours or if it's really detailed or has a lot of uh, technical elements, a lot of geometric elements. Like if I'm doing a building, it could take me up to three weeks. Um, it just depends on how detailed and specific it is. So it's been about two hours since I started this and I'll be finishing it up probably here. It's just gonna be a simple piece. It's not gonna be a lot of details. Yeah, sometimes I'll take pieces home and finish them there. So if I do like my wedding paintings, I go on paint on site and then I'll take them home and I'll finish those at home. But this one's just gonna be a simple little, simple little piece, nothing complicated. So, if you're interested in any of my pieces, you can find my work at my website at jordanstevensonstudio.com. Um, if you're interested in this piece specifically, uh, you can message me at uh, jstevensonstudio at gmail.com. And then my Instagram is jstevenson underscore studio. I also do teach some sip and paint classes over at Wilshire's throughout the year, just periodically, every month or every couple months. Um, so if you keep your eye out there for when tickets are available, you can sign up for those. Thanks for joining me today while I paint in the beautiful apple blossoms. Um, have a great day.